So today we're going through a few variations of the curtsy lunge. One of the things you're going to want to think about is keeping your hips stable and level. So thinking of like a spirit level and trying not to keep them uh, rotating this direction. So keeping them facing, say, a wall that is opposite you. One of the things that you might want to also do is hold on to something because it could feel unstable at first. The curtsy lunge uses a lot of the glute medius, which if strengthened over time will help you stabilize. But this is a muscle that is often underused, so if that's the case, then you might feel a little bit wobbly, in which case hold on to something for a little while, get the form, get comfortable with it. After a few weeks, you'll probably find you won't need to hold on to the wall anymore. You should feel this exercise in your glutes and your thighs, but not in your low back. If you are feeling that, try to film yourself, see what's going on. Perhaps you are extending through your lower back instead or compensating, in which case you will want to regress the exercise. So I'm gonna show you guys a few different variations going from easy to difficult begin with we're just going to do the most easy variation holding onto a wall I'm going to use this for stability and I'm going to bring my leg behind me and aiming for my knee to hit basically next to my heel so that's one of the ways I think about it and as you can see I'm not twisting like that I'm not allowing strange things to happen here I'm thinking of my hips staying facing forward so that it's almost like you're well exactly you're curtsying you're crossing your legs underneath each other and you'll feel a stretch in this area of your glute. So I'm doing this quite close together at the moment, but you can also go further back. And that is much more of a stretch now. So now this is actually quite challenging. But if you're beginning and you're feeling quite stiff, then again, head back to that really narrow stance. So there's two ways you can actually load this up. The first one is simply bringing the weight to your chest and keeping it close to your body so that the center of the gravity is nice and close to your middle rather than here where you're gonna be leaning forward and it's going to be um, pestering your back essentially. Other variation is simply holding it in your hands. Um, one thing that I prefer is if I want my legs to feel more fatigued and more activated, I'll hold it like this. If I want my core to kick in more, I will hold it higher up on my body. We've also got the variation where you're gonna get in just a little bit more of a stretch but you have to be a little bit careful to make sure that you, you're set up properly. So for instance, I will use plates and then stand on this side of the plate, but also quite far back because your knee is not gonna be able to miss the plate. Otherwise, if I'm here, I'm gonna hit my knee. So sort of bring your foot back. Seems obvious, but sometimes at the time it isn't. This is actually probably my favorite variation, but what I would do is I would use a uh, wooden box or something solid rather than a soft bench, which is what I'm using because it's going to be less stable and feel more wobbly. Um, I don't have anything else to use, so that's why I'm going to use it. But if, say, you have no choice but to use something soft, then you can, of course, hold it onto a wall. So you should have felt that in your adductors, your thighs and your glutes, you shouldn't be feeling it in your lower back. If you feel like something's not going right, or if you can't quite get the position angled properly, then just get in touch with a coach. There's plenty of them that are willing to answer your questions on our website. Thanks for watching guys. If you like that, please subscribe and leave a comment below with what you'd like us to cover next time.